does solo leveling look good? Animation breakdown looks like it's an educational video from Probably Pretentious. Let's check out what he has to say. Solo leveling, the show that has taken the world by storm. In fact, the first episode is the most liked episode on Crunchyroll. And what? It's the most liked video on Crunchyroll? But it was so... I don't want to say mid. I love solo leveling. We glaze solo leveling up on this channel, but you can pretty much agree with me that, you know, I thought episode two might be the most like liked video, but I guess it's from the initial hype, right? I, th I can believe this. It's it, It's got the most likes, not because the episode was good, but because holy shit, finally, solo leveling is out. Get hyped. You know, I think that's the reason why it has the most likes. I'm not making this up. It actually is. The manhwa is known for its jaw-dropping art and large-scale fights. Translating these aspects into an animated form must have been challenging. Let's talk about solo leveling. Make sure to subscribe. Before we talk about the episodes, let's go over the staff. Atsushi Kaneko is the anime- Atsushi Kaneko, animation producer affiliated with Aeon Pictures. This- BALD! Also BALD! BALD! But this guy is like the Mr. A1 Pictures. producer, meaning he is responsible for the logistical aspect and Logistics. the talent gathering process. Okay. Prior to solo leveling, he worked on Sword Art Online. Mm. He was the animation producer for the Ordinal Scale movie and Alicization. And That's like huge roles, right? These two titles are quite relevant. Yeah. Nearly every episode director and storyboard artist who has worked on solo leveling so far also worked on those SAO projects including series director Shunsuke Nakashige and action director Yoshihiro Kanno. That guys, they're faceless, but okay, these are like huge titles. Now, I'm not gonna be able to remember their name. There's a guy named Shunsuke and Yoshihiro, but these are like huge names for A1 Pictures. You know who else worked on those shows? Tetsuya Takeuchi and Nozomu Abe. This is Maybe fate, right? Fingers crossed. I'm not too familiar with director Nakashige's catalog, but I do love his work on SAO. Yoshihiro Kanno is the action director, and he is insanely good. His contribution to SAO was ridiculous, and more recently, he did God's work on the first core of Bleach TYBW. These are Having huge a titles, name man. like that associated with solo leveling is extremely reassuring. All right, the preamble is over. Let's go through the episodes. Generally speaking, the anime is aesthetically similar to the manhwa, minus those Are red they? noses. The anime. F the red noses. I guess the webtoon sometimes have similar those. To the Let's manhwa. see. Eh. Sometimes the red noses. Are, it's it's a little bit more like it's like a red aura around the nose. I don't know why they do that sometimes. Though. Minus those red noses. The anime follows the design and color philosophies of the source material, which is fine. Don't fix what isn't broken. The first episode opened up with a flashy action scene, which is the best thing they could have done. The scene features a ton of hand-drawn monsters, a recurring theme. Takafumi Tori's sequence was the Imagine they started this fucking episode off with a CGI ant fight. Nah, no, you would have been- that's just- that's just suicide. You would never do that. Light. His signature energetic animation is pure eye candy. It opens up with a smooth camera pan, followed by a large amount of background animation and competent camera work. Not only does the camera rotate, the perspective changes from a high angle shot to a low angle one. I do, I do enjoy it when the camera angle changes when you're doing the action sequences. Interesting, okay. The camera work was really good throughout. You can see the sky illustration rotate as this guy comes down, which adds to the motion. We get this cool looking impact frame sequence yes i always love it in anime whenever it's just like black and white like this and you can see all these different lines to kind of like exaggerate the things happening and at the end with this guy tearing through them which is such a fun idea this sequence this sequence right here single-handedly capture the hearts of many fans across the world that doesn't even know solo leveling i, I think this scene is the, the most replayed scene in solo leveling animated by main animator hirokatsu maruyama <laughs> hirokatsu maruyama thank you the goat for showing us chahein's gyat months before this anime even aired it's another highlight incredible storyboard incredible storyboarding absolutely agreed true <laughs> true it's incredible indeed incredible indeed i agree absolutely also look how complicated this angle is not does it look complicated hold up let's see
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is kind of all over the place. She is doing like a fucking big front backflip shit right now. The angles are all over the place. The camera's like going from above, yeah. How complicated this angle is. Not only is her movement difficult to draw, these faces also needed to change perspectives. <laughs> this guy's, this NPC's face took that much dedication to draw. Just yeah, I guess. Look at him, his face, right? It's got to keep like rotating perfectly as it's kind of like looking at her. It's an unorthodox cut in terms of composition. <laughs> Okay. And it was executed really well. Yes, the first thank you. episode also featured a short sequence animated by action director Yoshihiro Kanno. And you can tell it's him based on the timing and the effect shapes. His oh, yo. Yo, 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 yo. The fucking laser beam that incinerated this guy's skeleton. And Look you at can this tell shit. it's him based on this. This is so cool. Whoa, this is like the draft of it, huh? The timing and the <laughs> Oh my god, here it is. Boom. Oh my, the bone. Yo. So I guess. This is how, like, I don't know. Obviously, you're not going to just get the full product right away. There's, like, stages of, like, from getting drawn to all the color and blah, 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 all the stuff that I don't know about. But, huh, this is pretty cool to see, like, the draft of what it looks like before it gets fully finished. Shapes. His animation is very energetic, but not exactly in a Kanada-like manner. They do make excellent use of anticipation, although these cuts rely more on the effects. His effects animation can be somewhat shape-oriented. Occasionally, basically, he's like the anime beam guy. Really having these yeah, look at this. or oval particles. Kano's effects are really satisfying to look at. The second episode gave us a good look at the statues, and they are 2D. The compositing team Imagine if it was CGI statues, it would have been GG. Added some strong textures to them, which look decent. This sequence animated by Fasto was quite impressive. Any cut that shows the entire body is commendable because the animator needs to keep track of the overall anatomy. The start of this cut makes it look like a regular site profile shot, but it zooms in, changes perspective, and, you and can see rotates, the... turning into right. this low angle. And you can see like the height of the statue that's relative to Sung Jimu's body the entire time while the camera like transitions Short, which gets the scale across also how do you make this foot feel heavy by adding a bunch of wind effects yeah all you have to do is just like add these like white little ring things and it makes it look like it's more impactful which makes the motion yeah, like they're large the second episode also featured Yoshihiro Kanno as an animation director, and his influence is quite apparent. This cut, for example, has that satisfying timing and oval Ooh. effect shapes I talked about. This guy is basically the master of oval laser beams. Okay, got it. Also love the colors. Of course, most of it is blue. That's their color of choice for the dungeon scenes. One little thing that I don't like is the fact that the colors are so dark and blue. Now, in, in terms of like making a thumbnail, because when you make a thumbnail, you want like bright, vibrant colors, preferably with like, like, like bright green or blue in the background. Now, this is obviously a very minor, trivial, hyper, hyper focused problem that only a small percentage of people have, but it's just my little complaint. It's for the dungeon scenes, but the orange flames provide that much needed contrast. I was really surprised by how visceral and graphic this sequence was. They are not pulling any punches, which is great. Of course, not all of it was perfect. This cut, for example, looks quite weak. Sun's <laughs> arms appear even like some of the goblin fights, it looked a little weak, but I, I'm not sure that's too big of a problem. To be stuck in that coat hanger position. The final scene was really cool in concept and solid in execution. This is an ambitious cut with changes in both the perspective Whoa. and proximity coupled with complex background. I always love it when the camera like pans out, like from within to out like this. This is like a perfect example, right? You can feel like you go from like Sung Jin Mu's face and you pan all the way out to the statue to show like the depth of the situation. In both the perspective and proximity coupled with complex background animation. The start looks a bit janky. Sung isn't exactly in sync with the ground underneath him. But overall, this was a solid effort. Also again, how do you make the movement of the statues feel the the white steam the the wind the steam emanating from the weapon yes heavy by adding a ton of wind effects yeah the third episode is quite interesting as well it opens up with this insane drawing the uncanny amount of detail on the teeth makes it look more graphic the teeth
I guess the shadow apart effect of it. Yeah, I, I guess so. I never really re I never realized that though. They okay. They reanimated the scene. I just talked about how impressive it was, but they decided to redo it. Fair enough. Storyboard wise, it's similar but quicker. The episode was very well directed. They played around with the saturation and depth of field at one point. We get another competently animated low angle the shot, centipede which scene. gets the scale across. And again, 2D monsters. No CGI in sight. Still no CGI yet. Will they slip up? Are they ever gonna show a CGI? Because like, if they do, you know people are gonna fucking bitch about it. I don't think there has been a CGI monster just yet, but. Hmm, keep an eye out for that. Neat effect here. The background appears to be animated, but... Yeah, but the sand, I guess? Kind of like the, the little black shades here moving downwards? Technically speaking, it's not. Only these dark shades yeah. move. Yeah, that's a very smart way to kind of make it look like he's moving with these dark shades in the sand without the actual sand moving. The rest is a single color with textures added on top. This sequence was the highlight. I've talked about... Okay, this golem fight, it was kind of goofy, but it was very fluid. It was kind of slow to obviously show that it's a fucking small goblin fight and Sung Jin was still weak, but it was very fluid. First off, we can see Sung's entire body. Secondly, these cuts are long, meaning the animator had to take into account the anatomy, staging, and weight distribution for several seconds at a time. There's I no wonder, hiding I behind wonder... close-ups or... If I was the animator for this scene, I'd be like, yo, who gives a fuck? It's a goblin fight, but they have to put so much effort into something as minor as this. Quick cuts here. Nakagawa had to animate the entire body. Incredibly impressive. They managed to tell a story through the visuals. Sung isn't an experienced fighter, but he can keep up with the goblins. Later on, we see this wolf pounce and Lichen. when it does, it jumps around from one side to another, obviously trying to confuse its prey. Incredible attention to detail. The final rotation was really solid as well. It made good use of a 3D background. The fourth episode was really good. Good use of a 3D background. It made good use of... I guess the way that the camera was all rotating around. ...was really solid as well. It made... Like right now, the way that it's rotating background. ...good use of a okay. 3D background. The fourth episode was really good. Although the first half wasn't exactly worth writing home about. Because... I mean, it's just random power leveling scenes, right? It's between a fucking... Who cares, right? It's just... just you know, you're just power loving goblins and lichens. I didn't really expect much. I mean, they obviously saved all the budget for the Kasuka fight and then for, and then a little extra for that, you know, flex on the golem. At the end of the day, this is not a full Sakuga show. Not every fight. Sakuga show. Isn't Sakuga like the term in anime when animation budgets are extremely min maxed, right? Some scenes are just gonna get super quality animation, and other scenes are just like, what the fuck am I watching? It will be well animated. It will use limited animation, stock backgrounds, and speed lines. This fight did have a few impressive cuts, but overall, it wasn't exactly a Sakuga fest. Some scenes were limited, aka the same few frames were looped over. Again, I mean, they're random mobs, right? That's like a power leveling phase. I totally don't really care about, you know, I, I think it's smart to kind of reuse some of those frames to kind of just like save the resources so you can focus on like the main stuff that's about to happen. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way anime productions work. Oh, okay, the lichen and like the this scene right here, the lichen as well as kind of this scene. Nothing wrong. Pretty much the same, I see. The black shadow res. I don't even remember this dude. It's like a fucking panther. All right, I think this is glossed over. This is like fucking like three. What happened within a matter of three seconds? Along with that, that's just the way anime productions work. I did like the general atmosphere. They created this fantasy-like vibe thanks to the art direction. The second half, however, was amazing. You could tell right off the bat that this fight would look good. The camera work here is really dynamic. Oh the yes. The background is I, obvious. I did really like it. Like right now, where Sun gets hit and the camera finally calls like his side view, just to kind of, it like rotates with the hit, if you know what I'm saying, like this. 3D. Boom. I'm pretty sure this entire fight is storyboarded by Yoshihiro Kano, and it's brilliant. There's this uncanny smoothness to the snake's movement, which looked great. Also, once again, 2D monsters. The <laughs> fight was really dynamic. Still 2D, because they can't afford to do CGI. If they do that, it, people, so many people would make videos like, is solo leveling over? 
Is this the end of solo leveling? Is this the beginning of the end of solo leveling? I can't believe solo leveling did this. You know, you imagine all the different YouTube videos people be making just because of one CGI scene. Making heavy use of 3D backgrounds and creatively utilizing the entire area. They had so many cool ideas. Sung getting thrown around was really well animated. Unlike that one cut. Bro, he got tossed around like a fucking ragdoll. From episode 2, you could see his body Look at him. ragdolling around <laughs> and Straight interacting off. with the ground. He looks like a fucking dummy doll in like a fucking, what's it called? Uh, 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 what's, what's the word? A, a dummy doll that's used in like a car whenever a car is like used to like crash into something to see if it will survive so or not. smooth looking cuts. It's really impressive. Look at the desperation in his body language here. Perfectly done. Of course, it wasn't flawless. One of the biggest issues I had with this fight was how out of place the smoke looked. Look at hmm. these clouds and- The smoke below. It was such a minor detail that I didn't even recognize. Tell me they blend in. The blurring doesn't help either. The comp on the smoke isn't the best. However, the overall compositing was nice. The glow and flares from the sparks provided some much needed contrast to these otherwise blue heavy cuts. The action animation steps up a notch here. And it's not just the action. Look how strong the drawings are. They manage to convey Strong the drawings. I guess how bold it is. Just kind of just like showing the... <clears throat> sorry. The anger from Sung Jimu's face. The intensity. Also, notice how the entire body of the snake moves, not just the head. This mm. is one of my favorite. Honestly, I'm su I'm, I'm such a... I'm such a monkey. I am such an amateur when it comes to like noticing these animation differences that I can't even appreciate this. Like the fact that the entire snake's body is in frame, it's all kind of moving in synchro rather than just the head moving. I don't know. Maybe I've just been so used to trash, like Isekai CGI trash that like I can't even appreciate these scenes like that. Like that's what happens when you're just fed slop all the time and you're like, oh, okay. Not just the head. We're basically fucking, we're McDonald's enjoyers in, in a fucking five-star Michelin restaurant review right now. Head. This is one of my favorite cuts from this episode. The camera tracks the back of the snake while the 3D background moves around. The mm. snake itself isn't moving. Huh. The 3D background is moving at the same time. Huh. But we know it's in motion because the background is moving relative to it. Similarly, Sung is moving. Guess they could have had just a shitty still frame. As well, in the opposite direction. Reminds me of Yutaka Nakamura's cut from Free Ren. Free Ren. The scene doesn't end there. Sung regains his footing and glides all over the snake. The snappy timing and the wild background animation makes this cut a bit hard to follow. But me thinks it's intentional as it slows down in the next cut. Look how smooth this is. It's mm. animated on ones and the inside of the mouth has a ton of detail. I yes, the inside of the snake gussie does definitely has a lot of details right now. The mouth has a ton of detail. I can't get over how good the drawings are. They look so intense and powerful with these vivid facial expressions. This sequence was animated by Takafumi Tori and it was followed by Yoshihiro Kano's work. Love the perspective here. Sung's hand is closer to the camera and is therefore larger than anything else on screen. The creature animation was wonderful as well. It went from that creepy, calculated smoothness to this frantic motion. As we near the end, the energy steps up again. How do you make this already intense scene feel even more visceral by I adding know. these? Ah, right. Just making, like, changing the animation, like, style back to this, like, I don't know. It, it, it looks a lot more bold, right? The lines and everything, everything changed here. Lines, which serve as both line work and speed lines. They look so good. All of these elements come together in this cut. With the frantic body language, the thick lines, and the 3D background, creating this insane bit of animation. Wonderful work by Kano. Later into the episode, we get this- My favorite golem. scene. Again, they are not using CGI for the monsters. Take this is one part where they could have used CGI, because I guess it's not important, but they still did and they still didn't. That as you will. And that just about does it. Solo leveling is not a full Sakuga show. It has a few issues here and there. Some of the animation is limited. Some of the drawings are weak. But overall, it's a good looking show with yeah. some incredible highlights. Really excited for what's to come. That's about it. Did 
Now, give Mr. Probably Pretentious a sub. Like his videos if you did. Support his channel. This is a very different type of video than what we're used to. We usually would just watch like anime lore, but I don't know. This, this animation style stuff, it goes way over my head because I am just a simple monkey at the end of the day. But a lot of people are saying how much better soul leveling could have been if this is by like Studio Ufotable. And that's like a show, that's like a studio that does like Demon Slayer and Fate series, right? That, that looks really pretty. I don't know. I feel like A1 Pictures is doing a pretty goddamn good job, at least in my opinion anyways.